Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a continuation of the last class. Um, what's going to happen here? Uh, at this stage, we have all the spaces uh, in place. We cre have created the space schedule, and we have um, matched the outdoor airflow um, with the needs. So my uh, my comparison, it's uh, it's correct, and I agree with the numbers. Uh, from uh, from a rabbit, so with uh, I made my own calculations just to confirm that the outdoor airflow it's correct according to my needs. Um, at the moment, this is Outlooks level one. It's too much information, so I'm just going to select all the um, tags uh, hide in view. I'm going to hide the category of tags, so I don't. Uh, they don't mess with my uh, with my view. Um, so at this uh, moment, uh, my uh, spaces are correct. What I need to start to create is to create uh, air terminals. In order to uh, place the air terminals, I need to find them online or being supplied by somewhere. And uh, what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the Lindab quick selection tool um, for that uh, selection. Um, I can find this uh, plugin in this website. Uh, it's uh, just a matter of Googling, Googling for uh, Magicad and Lindab. Uh, this is the first website that pops up. And the download that we have to install, it's uh, the Lindab plugin for Revit uh, 2020. And uh, after installing that software, um, we will have this, uh, this tools, the Lindab tools to select. And this is the way it looks. Uh, at this stage, I know that I'm creating uh, air supply. So uh, I'm supplying, uh, I need the air terminals uh, for supply. I'm on the Lindab uh, product list and the project uh, manager. So. I need um, airborne uh, solutions from uh, from uh, Lindab, and I need that I need the ceiling diffuser. I don't know any product lines. I want to see everything, and a good starting point is to decide uh, is to define a range for my air volume, and I'm gonna go with 30. That's a normal number for this scenario um, for this scenario uh, projects. Um, so, because Lindab also has a big supplier system, so if you can go 500, it, it will not show up the, this, um, this recommended uh, air terminals that we are used to, to do. So, uh, I'm going to update the search with these parameters. And, yeah, so in the, in the bottom, that's the... That's the the amount the air terminals that Lindab supplies uh, to to us. Uh, some of them I already tested with some some of them. Uh, we have some problems with the automatic uh, sizing, so I know that some of them they don't work. It's recommended that you test them before you implement them in your project uh, because um, because uh, they. Um, of course, they uh, we need to test them before we implement it. So in the end, we don't have to change all the terminals again and redo the system because of uh, bad choice in the beginning. Um, I also use uh, the Delta P. So um, the Delta P, uh, that's the the pressure loss. Uh, the pressure loss, the punctual uh, pressure loss in Pascal's, and I'm also looking to find uh, an air terminal that with 30, with uh, 30 uh, liters per second as a, an air volume, um, draws the uses less uh, friction, so it doesn't have so much pressure loss. Um, I tested this once, and they work for me. Um, maybe it's a good idea to test some of the other ones. Sometimes it, they don't adapt to your uh, design. Uh, sometimes you want to have something more exposed, uh, uh, similar to Kaya's uh, main campus canteen. Um, it depends on the on the project that you are. So at the moment, I'm just going to select this one. 
And really interesting in here is that Lindab um, gives us the graphic and it calculates the pressure loss for our uh, air terminal. So this is the Lindab graphic specifically for this uh, family. And uh, instead of uh, going uh, down to through Lindab's uh, list of uh, pressure loss, I can have them uh, hit directly here. It's much easier to get the values. So at this stage uh, in the future, where I'll we'll do, I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna use uh, this um, this uh, graphic and use it on my on my uh, report. Um, I'm just gonna take a snip and because the air the air terminal is uh, 30, uh, so we can see here. I'm just gonna close this one. We can see here that because we define the air volume, this or the same, the airflow uh, to be 30, it calculates uh, the the pressure loss to be around uh, 11. Um, I'm not going to use, use it for the moment. I'm going to use it after uh, when we prepare our report. Okay, so at this stage, I, I like this family. I like the way it looks. I'm going to export to Revit. So it says here that the export was successfully exported, but um, I cannot cancel. I need to continue to get the family into Revit. So um, I continue and I should have the family uh, popping up at some point. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to place the family uh, around so i'm just gonna do some i'm just gonna do this uh, this room no order specific uh, of course i imagine that uh, i'm gonna have a pipe here that will supply uh, somewhere here because in this area uh, in this area here i have double ceiling so i believe this is going to be my vertical shaft it's going to be in around this uh, corner uh, so my system, um, my main supply is gonna is gonna come uh, through this direction. So I imagine that I will have a pipe somewhere supplying mm -hmm. here, another one going inside, and so forth. So I'm just gonna place um, the rest of the air terminals, and I will come back um, when everything is placed. Okay, so at this stage, uh, the building is uh, all populated with their terminals. Maybe it's too much. Uh, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. But just in a way, so we have the schedule uh, complete and it shows up all the rooms. Um, what I want to show you guys here is that um, in this section, uh, probably is not correct if I check the offset, if I'll check the elevation uh, from level on this air, on this, uh, air terminal. Um, it's uh, zero, and if I select uh, all of them, uh, it's zero as well. So I need to fix this uh, this uh, issue. I'm just going to create a section uh, here, so then I can uh, see um, the the needed elevation for this uh, ventilation. I'm just going to create a dimension here, so then I know. Okay, 2,700. I need to select uh, all uh, the 42. Um, all the 42 uh, air terminals and I'm gonna change the elevation of them to 2700 2700 and uh, all of them they should be of course I need to do this uh, for every for every room because I'm I'm placing this at the ceiling uh, level so I need to fix uh, I need to know uh, what's the elevation of the ceiling it might not be 2700 for all of them uh, in, in your case um, uh, continuing with the um, just a second okay so at the moment they are all correct the same height and um, there is something that you should notice I'm just going to extend the properties a little bit um, a bit more um, all of them they come pre-defaulted uh, with uh, 30 liters per second because that's what I decided on the Linda website um, all of them come with 30. So what's happening here is that uh, this space uh, has a certain need that I have defined with my space type. 
um, I don't know, let's say a hundred, uh, let's say that the needs of this space, it's uh, what is projected for this space, it's a hundred. Um, I will have a different value, that's the actual supply airflow, uh, that in this case, because it's 30 for uh, this four, um, it's going to be 120. And that's not okay, because uh, let's imagine that this space the requirements are 100 and i'm supplying 120 i need to fix uh, those uh, values uh, i can do it uh, manually i could come here select uh, all the four of them and uh, let's say let's imagine that it is 100 i know that 100 divided by 4 is 25 so i could just change them for 25 and i'm good to go um, this is a way to do it, of course, but um, this is a small project. Try to think it as a small project. And if I change, if the architect changes a wall or if something changes during the project, then the needs they will change. I need to create an automated, not an automated, but at least an easy process that I can realize that uh, that um, my my system is not correct anymore. For that, I will create an uh, air terminal schedule. I'm just going to go to the schedules and I'm just going to create uh, um, air terminal uh, schedule. So, on the selected available fields from the uh, air terminals, I'm going to select uh, family and type. Family and type, so then I know what I'm treating. I know it's always the same family, but I might have uh, two different uh, families at this uh, project. I'm going to look at uh, flow as well. That's a core value that I need. I'm um, going to need the count. Uh, I'm going to talk about the count a little bit uh, later. I'm going to need the space uh, outdoor air flow. So at this stage, I'm going to schedule the space uh, information. I need the space uh, outdoor airflow space outdoor. It must be in the end. Uh, space uh, outdoor airflow. Uh, space actual supply airflow. That's the one that it calculates from the from the air terminals. Actual supply airflow and uh, space name and space number. So and so then I know what uh, space name and space number, and I'm gonna bring these two uh, down because um, what's happening here is that the outdoor airflow uh, that's directly related to the designed needs of the space. So. According to the architects and according to the mechanical uh, laws, um, MEP laws, so the HVAC needs, according to the law, this room needs a certain amount of uh, air. And uh, I already decided it's going to be 100 uh, for an example. So the needs, so this outdoor airflow specifies the needs of this space. It tells me that it needs 100 liters per second. Uh, from the outdoor air. So this is what it is. So Revit calculates this based on the area and based on the number of people. We already verified that this value is correct in the other schedule, in the space schedule. So at this point, I know that this outdoor airflow is correctly uh, done and it's, um, it's according to what I need. Um, the other parameter in the bottom, the one that is selected, actual supply airflow, this one is calculated uh, through the um, through the air terminals, and in this case, I know because they are thirty in this space where I have my mouse, thirty times. Uh, at, 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 actually, at this stage, it's twenty-five because I've changed them just uh, just before. Uh, it's going to be hundred because I changed it's uh, four times twenty-five. Uh, in the beginning was uh, 4 times 30 and I changed it to 25. So what I need to know, I need to know if this value is equal to this one. And for that, I'm going to use a comparison um, parameter that I'm going to calculate. So I'm going to create a comparison parameter. I'm going to call it compare, compare airflows. 
flows. And um, I'm going to say that it's an HVAC and it's uh, airflow, so it's liters per second. Um, I'm just going to say that the specified or projected airflow minus the actual supply airflow. Well, I'm, what I'm looking for. If I have less actual supply airflow than the airflow, I'm going to have a negative value. And that way I know that I need to increase my flow on the air terminals. Uh, this, uh, this flow here. I need to increase this value uh, to, to get to zero, right? So I'm just going to say, okay, let's look at the schedule. And uh, yeah, I have... Uh, I don't know how many terminals, uh, 42 or something like that. Um, I have 42 air terminals and I have the compare um, airflows. Uh, nothing is near to zero. In some of them, I'm too much over. I'm over the needs. In some of them, I'm below the needs. Um, so what I need to do, I need to fix this. Of course, I can come here and uh, change them so the... The actual supply, uh, the um, outdoor airflow is 194. Um, I can check because this is the space number four. I have um, one, two, three, four air terminals. So I know that this number actually is going to be um, one fourth of uh, 194. Um, I can do this manually, but it's too much work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean the schedule a little bit so it's a bit easier to work. Um, I'm going to go to the sorting and filter. I'm going to sort by space number. I could use also space name, but because some of the names, they have some of the spaces, they have the same name, it will mix things up and it will not give me the proper result. What I'm going to do, because all the spaces have a different number. I'm going to use the number to to differentiate the, the spaces. Um, I'm also put a blank line between the spaces. And let's look at how it looks. So now I know that at space number one, I have two. Space number two, I have four. Space number three, I have two, and so forth. Um, I could reduce this schedule a little bit as well. Um, if I join this four in one and the way I do that it's on the sorting and grouping as well and I don't want to itemize every instance so at this point um, it's going to group uh, all the families with the same name so it's going to group everything that is on um, on uh, on one room and uh, this is the way it looks now so I know that space number one I have two Space number two, I have four, and so forth. Uh, the comparison now uh, is far from zero. The closest one is 4.2, but even so, is not uh, is not the proper uh, one. Um, actually, the difference because it's 30 by default, and the need it's uh, 40, uh, 34. I uh, I have um, I need to increase. 4.2 uh, to this. So if I come here and I say that this is going to be 34, 34.2, um, 34.2, um, 34 why is it not comparing? I didn't change it. No, I didn't change that. Um, 34.2. This one, yeah. So now, because the two values are the same, um, the comparison becomes uh, zero. Um, but I want to have a visual aid uh, for this, and for that, I'm going to create a conditional formatting. So I'm going to go to the format. I want this cell to be conditional format following the same the, this condition. If the compare airflows are in between. Uh, 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 
my background color turns green. So I know that at least one, yes, at least this one is correct. And I need to fix all the other uh, spaces. I need to fix all the other air terminals. Um, the way I'm doing it, it's um, actually I'm going to change the, the calculation here because it should be the opposite. It should be minus 16.3 and plus 40, 40. Because for instance, in this case, my supply it's bigger than my need. So it should it shouldn't it shouldn't be minus, it should be a plus. So I'm gonna edit uh, the the formula. Oh, it's not this one. Uh, I'm gonna edit the formula on the on the compare and I'm just gonna rotate them. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna remove this and it's gonna be actual supplier flow minus outdoor airflow and I just say okay and okay yeah so now it kind of relates a bit better uh, I know that I'm 16 under so I need to increase my uh, my supply so I know that I have two terminals and every uh, each one of them they are putting uh, 30 liters but I don't need the 60 I need 76.3 so the way I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this in, uh, in a smart way so I'm gonna put equal to 76.3 divided by the number of terminals that it's here number two divided by two and it becomes green I'm just going to do the rest uh, for all the air terminals and then I'll continue. Okay, so at this stage, uh, my air terminals are uh, more or less correct. I have uh, here uh, minus 0 0.1, but that's, that's, that's good for me. It's divided by 11 uh, air terminals. That's the corridor. That's where I have the more, more uh, air terminals. So it's this one. Um, it's okay. It's okay. If I have only a difference of 0 0.1, I'm really pleased with this uh, with this uh, result. Um, so all the all the air terminals uh, flow it's populated and correctly populated. Let's see at this moment. Uh, so this class uh, it's uh, finished. I'm just gonna um, annotate uh, these uh, air terminals um, using an, uh, a tag uh, for the. So I'm going to go to the annotate, I'm going to come to the tags, I'm going to see if I have some tags for air terminals. Actually I have, I have a diffuser tag, ah, because we are talking about the Dynado template, it comes already predefined for it. So I'm going to tag by category and I'm just going to tag here, actually it tells me the, the airflow. I don't need any leader, um, this is fine by me, I'm just going to tag them. Uh, like this, it tells me the yeah. So it tells me the air supply on each. I'm just gonna use uh, one per room. I'm just, just gonna this one, one here as well, one here. So then I know uh, what kind of uh, airflow. Visually, it's an aid for me. Um, so now I know, for instance, I can realize that this uh, one has 60 liters per second and this one has 57. It might be a bit high. Um, so I might have a problem actually. Not with the, I'm not going to put more air terminals. Probably what's happening here is that this space, the needs of this space are too high. Um, so if I come here, the need of this space actually it is. So the number of people of this space, uh, I can find it here. And uh, I know that this is, um, the values are uh, uh, by space type. And uh, it tells me that in this room, uh, we have 30 people, um, 30 people, 30.5 30 people in this room. I don't really agree with the results of this uh, kind of uh, room. So what I'm gonna do, and probably it is, this is a classroom. Uh, yeah, this is a classroom. Probably all the, all the classrooms, the values are too high. So what I'm gonna do, 
um, yeah so this classroom here 48 I'm having here 48 57 um, it's too high compared to the rest of the building I have 11 18 38 it gets 50 again this is also it might be also a classroom and in a room like this uh, we will have uh, 13 people it doesn't make uh, real sense to me how can how can we fit 13 people in this place it doesn't make really sense so what i'm going to do i'm going to change the the space type um, properties so i'm going to come to the space schedule and on any classroom it doesn't matter which one i'm just going to change uh, the area per person i'm going to increase the area per person maybe for 2.5 so each member each person needs 2.5 uh, square meters and that will change the, the amount of uh, persons for sure. Um, um, so I'm just going to check the amount of persons in this uh, room. Uh, yeah, 15, per, 15 persons. Even even though I think it's a bit high, but yeah, I can I can work with it. Uh, we have a problem now that we are, uh, because we were supplying for the previous amount of persons, uh, now we are supplying too much for sure. So I'm going to come to the air terminal schedule. So now I know that the, my outdoor airflow uh, dropped a little bit because I reduced the number of uh, persons on the room number 9. Uh, I'm going to just check which room is this one. Uh, okay. So in this room, what is telling me? Uh, in this room, what is telling me that uh, we have uh, we have uh, eighteen persons? Even though I, I think it's too big, it's still too big. So I'm looking for around ten persons. I'm going to go three point five square meters per each uh, person, and it reduces the number of persons for thirteen. That's okay. Of course, it reduces the calculated. Um, the calculate the airflow the needed uh, 107 that's that's fine I mean, we are talking about space number uh, nine so now we're going to go to the air terminal schedule and the air terminal schedule it looks uh, green but it shouldn't be green actually because i know that the space number nine the outdoor airflow it's not 227 uh, we need to refresh uh, the values of this uh, schedule because now this number is not correct anymore. It should be actually uh, space number 9. It should be actually 107 instead of 227. Um, okay, and because I've changed the number of people, of course, all the classrooms... Uh, all the classrooms will have different values, so I'm just going to adjust this um, this uh, value. So this is going to be equal to 194. So I'm looking at this number 194. That's what I need. Um, no, what I need actually is this one 91.4. Um, so 91.4 uh, divided by four. That's the amount of um, air supply uh, air terminals that I have, and uh, I'm looking at the value of 22.85. That's what I want. I'm just going to finish the schedule, and um, okay. So at this stage, um, all the air terminals are properly dimensioned. Uh, if I come again to my level one. Um, now, uh, my air terminals, they have uh, really nice values, everything are maximum 30, uh, so I'm going to have a little pressure loss, and that's what I want.